Hello and welcome to another booktube video from me Lauren from Lauren and the Books. I hope you're all doing very very well. Can I believe that this is the 28th of September and this is my third video of the month. This month I sort of has been a bit of a write-off due to different well mainly decorating reasons um, but yeah we're waiting on carpets which means I haven't returned all my books to my shelf which is why we're in front of this newly beautifully decorated wall um, and this is I think where we're going to be filming until the books are back on the shelf so the good news is before I get into the the books that I've read in the month of September um, five of them um, the good news is is that we are resuming normal service in terms of video schedule in October <clears throat> so there will still we'll go going back to three videos a week Sunday, Tuesday and Thursday, if you celebrate on those days, like I do to, with my videos. Um, and that'll be, yeah, we'll be going, so from today, we'll be back on normal um, upload sketch um, and just sort of doing it around the decorating. Well, the decorating is done, it's the carpets that aren't done and it's then just putting everything back, but we're gonna do that around the decorating. So yeah, happy to be back for proper now and um, October's an exciting month isn't it? We've got Outfits October coming up which I've done nothing to prepare for so I need to do something like that. Um, it's definitely feeling autumnal today. I've got my windows open and a jumper on um, and that sort of like autumnal air coming through is lovely. House of Games is back, Strictly's back, all sorts of autumnal sort of telly and vibes. I'm feeling good, I'm feeling good but here we are talking about the books that I read in the month of um, September which wasn't all that much mainly due to the decorating, decorating takes up an awful lot of time I wouldn't recommend doing it um, especially three three rooms in one week my dad was an absolute trooper and we got loads done but yeah only five books, I mean five books is still a good amount of books considering how much I've been doing this month as well um, but yeah five books read this month and I'm gonna work my way through them so the first one is one I can't really say all that much about but it's Marking Time by Elizabeth Jane Howard and um, this is the second in the Cazalet Chronicles um, series there's five books in total and this is the second book um, yeah so because it's the second in a book of, uh, in a series of five I can't really tell you all that much about the plot because I don't want to spoil what's happened in the first um, book and also going forward that's gonna be much of the way of the other books because something big happens in these books which would spoil uh, like which I imagine will carry on. I'm, I'm going to keep coming up with spoilers is what I'm saying for plot. But if I just tell you all about the Cazalet family. So the Cazalet family are um, are, are headed by um, the uh, for, by two elders. I've forgotten from their bloody names. The Ducci and I've forgotten what they call him. I can find out because I'll look at the old. Uh, here we go. The Brig of course um, and then they have uh, three sons and a daughter and um, those children also have children and we're finding out about their family so the first book is set um, in the summer and they're all going back to um, the the grandparents house to spend time together as a family and it's on the uh, the, the war um, is that the first world war is is over but the second world war is looming um, and this book is firmly set in the second world war um, but i love hearing from the perspectives of the the all of the family it's really set. so what what differs about this book that does in uh, that's, that's different to the first book is that we spend more time with with certain members of the family so the the whole first book was very short sort of like snippets hearing from like one of the sons and then and, and then his niece and then her granddad like and all these little sort of snippets and like sometimes not even being a page like sometimes being a paragraph um but we get much more time spent with some of my favorite characters in here so like i said the younger members of the family louise she's a fave of mine polly clary we're spending like whole chapters with them um and i'm love loving hearing them sort of of like coming of age they're all becoming sort of young women um and i think this time uh, which it starts in 1939 but runs all the way up to 42 i think it goes up as far as 41 sorry winter of 41 um we're here in like uh, that that time to live as well anyone is very interesting but in particular for my interest is living as a young woman during that war time and like women getting um, more freedom and more being expected of them and taking on jobs that the men would normally do and stuff like that and um, yeah and then there's one character in here Louise who I absolutely love she wants to be an, an actress and I love hearing from her point of view but yeah so it's a great great family epic um, set in sort of like wartime Britain which increasingly is becoming one of my favourite periods to read books about um, and yeah, I love how seasonal it is. I love everything about it. I really, really love it. And I'm really looking forward. I've already got the, I've got the whole series now because um, a few kind people bought the um, the third and fourth uh, for me from my wish list. So um, the, the 
third is ready to go. That's called Confusion. Um, and yeah, I can't wait to read that in October. So I'm reading Confusion in October. The fourth one is called Casting Off is the fourth one. And then the last one is called All Change. And the reason I wanted to, I've set it up so that I do these on these months, is that All Change is set over Christmas uh, in the 50s. So quite a big jump. Uh, I think maybe even 1959. Um, and I thought that would be lovely to read that around Christmas. So yeah, that's why I wanted to read these. So second book read and very much enjoyed it weirdly that wasn't the first book i read in the month i don't know why i've done this the other way around but the first book i read this month was all about evie by mattson taylor um this is uh, the sequel although you could absolutely read this as a standalone to the miseducation of evie epworth um which was a book that we read for patreon book club a couple of years ago um and we all really really enjoyed and um kindly the author Mattson Taylor got in touch with me and said that he'd done a few literary um, festivals that year and lots of people had said to him that they'd found the book because they'd um, they'd been part of the book club and really really enjoyed it so he was uh, lovely to hear that from an author anyway um, but he sent me a little hamper with all sort of like uh, northern like Yorkshire tea thing tea bags and uh, little cakes and jam and stuff like that it was a it was amazing um so yeah so i've been keen to read the the sequel because i enjoyed that one so much and again this is sort of like woman coming of age at a very interesting time in history so the first book is set in 90 in the 1960s early 1960s and we're following evie um uh, living at her family's farm and thinking about maybe where she wants her life to go and this book is set in the 1970s and this is following Evie now living in London and working for the BBC and uh, working for Women's Hour in fact and um, and but maybe not being particularly happy there and thinking about what other jobs she might enjoy more and I really enjoy the friendships that she has in here and the relationships she has in here and like Mattson Taylor really writes women amazingly there's a scene very very early on in this book where a woman uh, takes a pregnancy test and I was like bloody hell like you must have done your research to find out what this is like because he's really got it absolutely perfect but yeah very fun very warm very reminiscent of sort of like Bridget Jones's diary um, it's set in sort of like diary vibes um, and also you're hearing from a, a, another character um, as well but there's also sort of like these little case studies which I found really funny of dates that um, Evie's been on so for example we've got here uh, so these little sort of like squares of dates that Evie's been on uh, Douglas McRae from Glasgow he's a British rail engineer he was seen for nine days plus an interminable trip on the east coast main line his appearance is like a bearded Tony Jacklin and um, he's a um, his amazing parts were that he had an impressive knowledge of branch line stations he was a Bronte fan and kilt worthy legs but less amazing was that he wouldn't dance grubby fingernails and stray bait bean in beard <laughs> so yeah that'll give you an idea of the sort of uh, humour of it but yeah very enjoyable very warm sort of perfect sort of autumnal reading I guess um, next up is a reread it's a book I read for Patreon Book Club it's Heartstopper uh, Volume 1 by Alice Oseman um, so the theme for September's Book Club was uh, Boys in Love on telly so the two choices were Heartstopper um, and also uh, Red White and Royal Blue because that's recently been made into an Amazon film. Um, Heartstopper 1, Heartstopper is a graphic novel about two boys Nick and Charlie uh, meeting at school and falling in love and um, Charlie is gay and Nick doesn't realise but he is bisexual and it's th this episode 1, uh, this, this volume 1 very much sets up their sort of like home situations and uh looks into their feelings for one another it's romantic it's beautiful it's exciting i love everything about this i really 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 do and we had a really great discussion about it at book club not only the good thing was was that so many people love this but there was also a few people who were like oh i didn't really love that part of it and like made us and i always appreciate the, the those people saying those things during book club because when someone's sort of like blanket loving everything and someone says oh actually I could have done with a little bit more of this or I didn't think like this was very well developed and stuff like that so it, it was great to have like a, a second a second opinion on it almost um but yeah those those thoughts made me love it even more I guess but yeah it's now been made into a tv series so series one on Netflix follows uh, volume one and two and then series uh two follows volume three um, we re I rewatched volume uh, episodes one and two of series one, um, which is basically like this book and maybe a little bit less than this book. And it, the series is just done so incredibly well. They're all cast beautifully, and some of the scenes are literally like, like actual like 
carbon copies of what happens in the book. Here's a, here's a scene where um, Nick's pen has exploded during registration and him and Charlie are going to the bathroom um, to, to, to wash this off of his hands. Um, and yeah, and then there's a lovely, I mean, I don't want to spoil the whole series and the book for you and everything, but there's some really, really lovely bits. A lot of it depends on like text messages between the two teenagers, which I know is how teenagers communicate. So like that feels really real and it moves the story along really well. And I'm always just amazed. I mean, like I said, like I've read up to Siri, I've, I've read this one, I've read twice now, but all the rest I've read once up to volume four. Volume five is out, I think in October. Um, and I'm always amazed at how much sort of feeling and love and worth and sort of like fizzing excitement I get from reading a book of these beautiful, um, beautiful illustrations, but not with much dialogue. Like a lot of the stuff you can see here, there's not always that much dialogue. Yeah. I really, really loved it. I think it's great. Uh, I want to re reread the whole series and I'm really looking forward to finishing watching series one again and then go on to series two. So yeah, and all of the, like they've cast it so perfectly, like I said, but it's really like diverse and there's amazing representation. And all of those kids that are playing like the, the teenagers in this show, they're all so impossibly cool. <laughs> I've seen them, like, I follow a lot of them on Instagram and they're all wearing like the most amazing outfits and going to like doing really cool stuff and being at like London Fashion Week. And yeah, they all seem like really grounded, amazing little people. So well done them. Uh, next up was an audio book that I listened to. Um, I actually started listening to <clears throat> another audio book and got quite a long way through it, but it had to go back to the library because I was listening to it on Libby. So I will finish listening to that. It was a Michael Rosen book that will appear in my, um, in my October wrap up, hopefully if it's back in time. Uh, but one I did manage to complete was everything is washable by Sally Hughes, which is a book that I very much enjoyed, um, listening to, particularly as I was listening to it while I was doing, um, the, the decorating and sort of like packing stuff away and things like that. This book by Sally Hughes is, it's a sort of book of tips, which I absolutely love because I quite like a tip. I quite like being told how to do something. Um, if I've got a question about it and this sort of like told me how to do things that I'd sort of maybe been doing and not really sure how to do it or things to do that I hadn't even really thought about. So it covers basically every, like so much stuff. So Sally Hughes, um, is a journalist and has worked as a sort of stylist and a beauty journalist. There's a lot of stuff in there about fashion and like some really, really like, um, well-rounded views on fast fashion and also, um, but coming at it with a perspective of like, fast fashion can be, so like, just because you're paying a lot of money for something doesn't make it not fast fashion because if you're going to wear it once and then never wear it again then you've contributed to fast fashion so some really good observations on fast fashion and similarly saying that like if you're buying a jumper from Primark but you're literally going to wear that jumper every week for the rest of your life then maybe that isn't fast fashion and it was just very sort of like like I said well-rounded views on that so stuff about fashion in there like actually like styling and stuff like that lots of stuff about beauty but also stuff about like where to, what to look for when you're looking for a new carpet, how to fit a washing machine, how to do a breast examination, something that I'd never been shown and did that, found that very, very helpful. Um, how to meet the in-laws, how to survive your first day at work, what to do on your first day at work. Like so much stuff was covered in here and I just found it really super helpful. As an audiobook, it was very, very helpful um, and I love listening to it, but I do think I might buy myself the, um, the hard copy of it because I think um, if they if they if it's got a good index in it it will be very good to sort of like refer to and there's definitely some stuff that I would like to to go back but really highly recommend and, and narrated by the author herself which I always love anyway so yeah then the last book um, the fifth book of the month um, there's still like five books is still very impressive but like that's I'm normally a thirteen book plus girl in uh, in the month so yeah I mean marking time was very long but still five books uh, the last book I read was a celebrity memoir which I do love and this is uh, John Waite's Dancing on Eggshells. John Waite um, is well more recently um, competed in Strictly Come Dancing in 2021 um, in the first all-male couple he was partnered with Johannes Radebe whose <laughs> memoir has literally just come in at the library from me for me I've just got an email saying that he's there waiting for me um, and I knew of John because he'd won I think it was the third series of the Great British Bake Off which is a massive sort of like institution of tv here in the uk i'm sure you've got versions of it in your country or wherever you are or you've seen the great british bake-off um and john won the third series of that and now sort of has regular tv work appearing as a tv chef on things and yeah more recently i saw him on um on strictly come dancing and loved him and johannes's uh, partnership so this is a book about john's upbringing and what it's like um to be gay um and that sort of like 
when living like he lived up north and stuff like that and but he's always been quite flamboyant he would say and having to sort of like curb that around particular people and things like that so very very um good right uh, good good sort of like experiences hearing from his experiences of of his life but also um really enjoyed hearing more stuff about his sort of tv career and and things like that and how after um the ba winning the bake-off he sort of everything went a bit to his head and like the admission of that and the honesty of that and how like it must have been quite a thing to sort of have a good look at yourself and realise that maybe you're not living the life you want to live. Like, he said he was going to parties all the time and very reliant on alcohol and things like that, and that's something that appears throughout the book. Um, and then, um, sort of his TV career maybe not going the way that he thought it was going to go because he thought he could do that. Like, he was hot topic when he first won. And then that sort of dip in for a bit and things like that. And then, obviously, I loved the bits about Strictly. Um, and that was very interesting because although he calls it the Strictly Blessing, there's one thing. So Strictly Come Dancing is a uh, dance competition in the UK. David and I do a whole podcast about it. We love it so much. Um, and it comes out every year on the run-up to Christmas. And it's partnering celebrities with um, professional dancers. And they learn all sorts of ballroom and Latin American um routines and yeah it's great and I've, I've watched it since the beginning my sister used to be a ballroom dancer when i was younger so i'm very familiar with like going to blackpool to watch her compete and things like that so it's sort of all wrapped up in a lot of stuff for me i love it very much um and it th there's this thing called the strictly curse um which is often where people who've been partnered together um end up uh leaving their current partners romantic partners and 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 uh getting with their strictly dance partner because i imagine it's a very in high intensity sort of period of months where you're spending every single day together pressed up against each other and you're being told by the judges you need more chemistry you need more chemistry so it happens more often than not <laughs> there's quite a lot of couples that form some people are just single and like end up getting with their dance partner or end up getting with another dancer on the show and something like that but people have been known to break up with their husbands and wives or partners to in order to get with their Strictly Come Dancing partner. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's called The Strictly Curse. But the, 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 the chapter in here about Strictly Come Dancing is called The Strictly Blessing, which I thought was so lovely because John said it just came at a really amazing part of his life. And he talks about how amazing it was to be in that first all male, um, uh, all male partnership and how they didn't shy away from like dancing in a romantic fashion as two men. It wasn't just like, two people doing dance routines next to each other like they were still like pushed up against each other and trying to recreate like romance and things like that and obviously that inevitably led to John believing that he was in love with his strictly come dancing partner because that's what happens um and yeah he was really sort of like again so much honesty in this book and um I really appreciated that and sort of felt felt that John was very trusting in this all to sort of like because a lot of the views he had on himself weren't very favorable and sometimes people and not in a way where it's sort of like he was doing himself down he was sort of like really having a good look at himself and some of his actions and stuff like that and I just thought oh John like but I very much enjoyed it and like I said really enjoyed the Strictly part so there we go five books I read in the month of September let me know what you read in the month of September uh let me know if you've read any of these books or any of these books sound up your alley and yeah I guess I'll see you from now on as planned three times a week um and yeah thanks so much and I'll see you all again soon for another Richie video goodbye